So when I was in in the lab in in Philadelphia, I was the only person there who wasn't who didn't have a PhD or wasn't working towards a PhD. So all the people I was working with in the lab were working towards their PhD. And when I was at, at Melbourne University um, working in the, in the control systems lab there, I did a master's degree, uh, sort of part-time while I was doing the work, and had thought about doing a PhD at that time and thought, well, a PhD is a lot more work and I'd probably rather leave with a master's degree, which was, you know, easily reachable, than to sign up for a PhD, which was a much bigger piece of work, which I may end up with nothing. So I thought, okay, I'll, I'll take the master's and leave. And so I was the odd one out in, in the lab there. And the CSRO promotion system had a glass ceiling for people who didn't have a PhD. So coming back and figuring I really wanted to do research, uh, I'm going to bump into the glass ceiling pretty soon. I should sign up f and do a PhD. And I was highly motivated coming back from the stint working in, you know, a, a top research lab with lots of other people working on PhDs. I thought, yeah, I could do this thing. Now, fortuitously, the guy Malcolm Good, who'd been my boss uh, for a while at CSIRO, he then he'd moved back to Melbourne University uh, in the mechanical engineering department. So I tapped him to be my PhD supervisor. And so I was connected again with, with Malcolm. So once I'd made up my mind that I wanted to do PhD and it was going to be something to do with robots using visual information to do, to do useful tasks, the next thing then was to find a supervisor. The supervisor, be an academic at a university, and you want somebody who uh, basically guides you through the process. You're like the apprentice to the supervisor who is the master, right? So it's got to be someone you can work with well, uh, someone who can ask good questions, challenge you, push you, uh, motivate you, uh, you know, pick you up when you're feeling a bit, a bit low with the whole PhD process. So Malcolm Good, who had been my, my boss at CSIRO, he had gone back to Melbourne University and so he was kind of a logical choice to be, to be my supervisor. My other supervisor was uh, my CSRO boss, a guy called Paul Dunn. And Paul had been you know, a key part of the vision system project within CSRO. And he'd also been my computer science lecturer back at Melbourne University. So he'd worked at Melbourne University. So it was pretty incestuous, this whole CSIRO, Melbourne University thing at the time. There was you know, people, people moving backwards and forwards, which I actually think is healthy. It was an intense time. Uh, so when I started my, my PhD, I was doing my PhD part-time and, and working for CSIRO. And they were very generous about that. So, you know, they gave me sort of half, the, half my time I could spend working on my PhD, half the time I could spend working on projects at CSIRO. Uh, and when I started, the two things were almost completely aligned. Over the three years, they separated, uh, and that made things a bit awkward and, and stressful, to be, to be honest. Uh, a second daughter was born uh, during the PhD, and we also chose to do a very big uh, house renovation. So we had an unrenovated house uh, and another baby came along. So yeah, it was, it was stressful on many fronts. <laughs> so while I was doing my PhD is when I really first started publishing uh, academic papers, because as a PhD student, that's what you're supposed to do. Though there are many great things about the CSIRO lab that I worked in, a really unfortunate aspect of the lab was that they were very anti-publication. And for researchers not to be able to publish actually is a disadvantage to them. And so that, um, that tension moderated over time. Certainly in my early days of CSIRO, very little in encouragement at all to, to publish. So, during the PhD, then I started to I started to publish and started going to to academic conferences. Along the way, uh, you know, to to help me with my own PhD research, I started writing code. Uh, this obsession about writing about writing code. I love writing code, so I wrote code just to support me in doing useful things, uh, functions about robots, uh, so simulate robots, and do a whole bunch of robot-related calculations, and that was. That was useful, very useful to me, and I figured it'd probably be useful to other people as well. And so it 
became a bit more formalized and was released uh, as a thing called the Robotics Toolbox for MATLAB. MATLAB is a programming environment and my contribution to that was this uh, robotic specific functionality. And that's also been uh, sort of a thread through, through my entire life. It started as, a, as something useful I did in my, in my PhD. It's got a life of, it, it, of its own. It's used all around the world for, for teaching and, and for research. Uh, but its, its origins were quite humble. There was some issues with CSIRO and open source software at the time. CSIRO has got some strong ideas about controlling intellectual property. And because it's been done as my PhD, it was a bit of a gray area. Was it mine personally or was it CSIRO's? Their attitude is they own everything. And so, and that was okay. They were happy for it to be put out there. But then an author of a really well-known robotics textbook, a guy called John Craig, contacted me. He was doing the third edition of his robotics textbook. He wanted to use my, my toolbox to, uh, for the problems in the examples within his book. And that was a great opportunity. I'd never met John, but he's very famous as a author of one of the few robotics textbooks at the time. It was a great opportunity, and I was happy to do that, but I had to sign an agreement with the publisher uh, about the software. And Syro went weak at the knees and didn't want to have anything to do with an agreement. Uh, so the solution, after a, after a, a lot of back, backwards and forwards, was that Syro deeded the software to me. So there is a legal deed that says all the software that I created in my PhD is entirely my, my property and my responsibility. So then I signed the letter for the publisher and that project went ahead and John used that uh, to set the examples in his book. Uh, that then gave me a, a, lot of, a lot of freedom. 